Hello students, this is Dr. M. Bhushanam, Assistant Professor in Zoology, Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. Hope all is well. Take care of your good health during this pandemic situations. Well, students, in today's session, we are going to learn and discuss on the topic of uh, origin and evolution of man, that is, ancestry of man. In your syllabus, it is written as human evolution and the salient features of important fossil stages of man. The objective of today's session is to study the salient features of important fossil stages of man. The content includes under human evolution, salient features of important fossil stages of man. Well, students, first of all, Remember a point here, we the human beings are one of the outcome of natural evolutionary process making us to occupy a very unique position in the living world. We do have a phylogeny like any other mammals or animals. Then what is the proof to say it so? The answer is fossil records are available related to the human kind to us. There is a branch of evolutionary science called Paleoanthropology. Paleoanthropology is the scientific study of human evolution. It also deals with the study of human races, their culture, their society and their biological lifestyle. If you look into the paleoanthropological history, many paleontologists, students remember, paleontologists refers to the scientists who are uh, dealing with the study of fossils and anthropologists refers to the scientists who deals with the study of behavior of the human beings of the past life. So, the paleoanthropologists have written many of the books based on the evidences that could um, help them and their assumptions also could help them to draw certain of the conclusions. In this line, Charles Lyell of 1832-1833 wrote a book titled as um, geological evidence for antiquity of man. Then follows the next book that is man's place in nature's in nature is written by the famous Thomas H. Huxley in 1863. The next popular book is the Descent of Man, written by Charles Darwin in 1871. These are the three major books related to the paleoanthropological studies of human evolution. Of 
all this paleoanthropological books explains the process of biological evolution of human beings that is it involves the speciation in human race it is again due to a series of natural changes which causes the speciation in human race this human race arise due to the uh, adaptations to the changing environments like any other organisms on the earth the organisms which could not adjust or adapt to this new changes have died and many have become extinct the paleoanthropologists have studied the comparative anatomy of the records of recovered uh, human fossils and their artifacts that is uh, uh, the things used by then man who lived in the picture when you look at down shows towards the uh, left side series of the a uh, skull of various uh, rays of the human beings and towards the right side various artifacts used by the man then well students when we look at the gist of the human evolution given by all this paleo anthropologists it is summarized as follows first of all human beings are evolved on the earth like any other uh, mammals or primates they belong to the class primata our primates students as we know the order of i'm sorry class of mammalia order of primata the order of primata includes the animals with the nails over the uh, digit tips their four limbs are rotatory and can move um the four limbs above their head we can lift our head uh, uh, four limbs above our head like this so like this even uh, uh, all the groups of primates can do so it includes um, groups of apes monkeys and uh, uh, even the human beings the human beings belongs to the suborder um anthropoidea anthropoidea as we can change the facial muscles based on the emotions emotions like uh, anger laughter hunger etc can be expressed through our facial uh, muscles so this is what um, the group of primates uh, Uh, under the suborder anthropoidea can uh, exhibit so we the human beings also belong to the family hominidae as we know we show the erect posture we can stand straight with the help of uh, uh, two hind limbs so we also can exhibit the locomotion by using the hind limbs we call it as bipedal locomotion that is movement exhibited by using two hind limbs we belongs to the genus homo and the species sapiens so the modern human beings are scientifically named as homo sapiens sapiens so twice we will have to write sapiens sapiens so that's the scientific name of the modern man you may be wondering 
Why is this name Homo sapiens sapiens is given to us? So this name was given by um, the father of taxonomy, Carlos Linnaeus, to the modern man. Homo means man, sapiens means wise, wise. So Homo sapiens means man who is wise. But the modern man of present era is named as Homo sapiens sapiens. Twice sapiens is repeated, which means he is more wiser than the wise man who ex uh, existed millions of years back. The present modern man has got high brain capacity, that is the uh, space to hold more of the brain and he is considered to be the intelligent animal on this earth. The second point under human evolution that we need to understand is human beings are not the descendants of the chimpanzees or any other monkeys or any other primates. We share the close matching with the genetic material with these apes or monkeys or chimpanzees, indicating that the genetic material is not same, but we share the similarities. What does this implies or indicates further? It indicates that we the human beings and apes are originated from the common ancestor. So remember here, it is the concept given by Darwin. According to Darwin, we have a common ancestor from whom this primate group of organisms of apes, monkeys and human beings are originate. This ancestor, the common ancestor, whom we all are uh, developed from, is called Dryopithecus. So that's the scientific name that we give for the common ancestor of apes, monkeys and human beings is Dryopithecus. In modern um, Latin name, we call it as Dryopithecus, which is derived from two uh, Greek terms, Dras means tree, Pithecus means ape. So the meaning of the word Dryopithecus is the ape who lived on the trees. So it is discovered by a French paleontologist, Edward uh, Lartet in 1856. So down is the picture when you look at towards the right side is the indication of, I'm sorry, is the picture depicting Diopithecus. And towards the left side when we look at, it is the indication of the first starting left extreme is the Dryopithecus from whom the rest of the ancestors of human beings have uh, originated. So students remember here, we the human beings are not evolved from monkeys and apes. If that concept uh, prevails in our mind, we need to uh, uh, remove it. We are not evolved from monkeys and apes, but monkeys, apes and human beings are all evolved from, that is primata group of organisms are evolved from a common ancestor who lived on the trees called Dryopithecus. Remember students, the uh, study about Dryopithecus is not given in your syllabus. Uh, only major human beings uh, 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 ancestral forms we need to study, that is uh, fossil stages of man we need to study. Since it's the original form of the common ancestor, we are not studying about this ancestor in according to your syllabus. But we need to understand from whom we are all originate from. Okay. The next important thing that we need to understand is the time taken for this human evolution is not a very short time. 
it took around the millions and millions of years of time. When we look at the human beings, it has taken up around 25 to 60 millions of years uh, 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 of history it shows of the human being evolution. During this period, around 15 to 20 different species of ancestral forms of human beings are seen, that is early human beings are seen, which adapted to the changing environment and started showing certain of changes in their body. Uh, characters. So among these around five to six species of human beings and their ancestral forms we need to learn according to your syllabus. Students remember uh, the ancestral human beings of five to six species alone is given in your syllabus uh, instead of 15 to 20 different types. So major ancestors of modern man, Homo sapiens sapiens are number one Ramapithecus, number two, Australopithecus, number three, um, uh, Homo erectus, number four, Neanderthalensis, uh, number five, Cro-Magnon man uh, are the major species that we need to understand and under Homo, uh, Homo erectus, two subspecies we need to understand. So this is about the uh, introduction related to the human evolution. Down in the picture when we look at we can find all these uh, ancestral forms of the human beings including Ramapithecus, Australopithecus, Homo erectus that includes uh, Java man and Peking man, then uh, Neanderthalensis, then Cro-Magnon man. Uh, these are all the ancestral forms of the present modern day man. The origin of all primates including the human beings like uh, ancestral forms of human beings were assumed to be uh, to have started in the uh, geological time scale when we look at it is Eocene epoch and tertiary period. So that is the time when we the human beings have initially originated on this earth and this was between uh, 75 to 60 millions of years ago in the central Africa place. So human evolution is concentrating towards the central Africa place from where the human beings got originated. Students, this is an important point you will have to remember. The place where the origin of all uh, human races take place is central Africa or Africa. Then um, the uh, species or race started moving to um, the places of uh, Europe, then to Asia and rest part of the world. So down is the picture, the first uh, ancestral form of the human beings uh, were excavated in the form of the fossils. So fossil study is the major um, uh, proof through which the human evolution uh, gets supported with the theories and the concepts. Uh, remember students, the major races of human beings are evolved during the period of time which we call it as a, a Pleistocene period. So the most closest form of the human beings called a hominid group. Hominid, um, the human being closest ancestral form, have developed their origin and uh, showed the uh, evolutionary significant traits in them. Uh, which uh, existed during the Pleistocene period of time. Okay, So all these are important, the period when the human got originated, then the um, uh, place where we the human beings got originated and the organism from which the common ancestral uh, form, the human beings originated are all important. Well, let us now understand the ancestral form of the modern man, first one to begin is Dryopithecus. Students, again I will repeat, this Dryopithecus uh, 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 fossil form, you need not have to um, study for your exam because it is not given in your syllabus. But for us to understand the sequential order of the human evolution, it starts from this man called Dryopithecus man. 
Um, this Diabeticus man is the first one to begin with the human evolution. When we look at here, Drasmin's tree, Pitikosmin's ape. So the meaning of the term Diabeticus refers to the ape that lived on the trees is the Diabeticus. It represents our pre-human ancestor who lived during early Miocene epoch time. So the first prior to the human uh, actual hominid group, we had the ancestral forms, we call them as the pre-human ancestors uh, who lived during the Miocene epoch. Students remember, the earliest known ancestor of man and the extinct ape man is this Dryopithecus. This Dryopithecus lived during the period of uh, 60, 000, uh, 60 million years ago in the Central Africa and scientists have found the Dryopithecus uh, um, fossils in the places of Africa, Asia and Europe. We also call this man Dryopithecus ape as proconsul. Proconsul refers to refers to the first formed ape man who lived as the ancestral form of the pre-human beings. So that's what the meaning proconsul refers to. So another name given for Dryopithecus is proconsul. The evolution of man began from this particular fossil. It is the common ancestor for the apes as well as the human beings. It's found in the rocks of Miocene period and Pleiocene deposits. So it's a pre-human uh, ancestral forms lived somewhere uh, 23 to 26 million years old, around 30 million years old, uh, mean, uh, ago, this man or ape man had lived. Down in the picture, when we look at towards the extreme left, is the skull of Dryopithecus showing the characters exhibited by this particular Dryopithecus man. Towards the right side, is the uh, a diagrammatic representation of the face, how the Dryopithecus was looking and towards the extreme right side is the skull relating to it. You can see the size of the skull is very, very small. We have discussed Dryopithecus fossils were excavated in the places of Europe, Asia and um, Africa. So the size of this skull when we look at it is very, uh, it was of small size, medium size and of large size like that of Gorilla. This Dryopithecus was lacking most of the characters like li uh, living human beings and even of apes. But what characters that they show um, to claim that the human beings and apes are originated from this Dryopithecus man? Students remember, it is the canine teeth. Canine teeth were very large, which is not a character of the human beings. And It is a character of the monkeys, but not of the rest of living apes. This 
Diabeticus man had fed on fruits and leaves. They lived on the trees. The limbs were not excessively long. The forelimbs and hindlimbs were of same length, indicating the semi-erect posture like uh, we find in most of the monkeys. The skull was very small. Internally, it lacked many crests. Crests are nothing but the undulations to hold uh, uh, tightly the brain inside. So it was almost uh, uh, smooth inside. And they inherit, uh, inhabited or they lived in the forest areas. The brain capacity of this man was 600 ml, that is uh, uh, cc, centimeter cube. And they had no forehead, so receding forehead almost. You can see all these characters related to the picture down representing Dryopithecus. The next fossil man that we need to study is Ramapithecus. From here onwards, uh, the stages of fossil that we study is prescribed in your syllabus. Ramapithecus is also called as Sivapithecus. Rama named after the Hindu god Lord Rama. Pithecus means a uh, ape. Reason was this fossil was discovered in the northern parts of India. Uh, to commemorate Lord Rama, we gave the name Rama Pithecus for this particular fossil. It is also called the Shiva Pithecus, remember. Okay, it is to commemorate the Lord uh, Shiva. The earliest pre-human ancestor was Dryopithecus, from which originated the next group of human ancestor called Ramapithecus. Students remember, before the actual human beings, that is hominid group, we had the ancestors which are called as pre-human ancestor. In that group, we have studied Dryopithecus number one, number two is this Ramapithecus. This Ramapithecus is a pre-human ancestor who lived during the same period of Miocene epoch, but he is considered to be the first man-like ape. He looked like the man with the features. The features they showed, like human beings, were uh, recorded in the fossil, especially of the lower jaw, that the scientists have excavated from the areas of Sivalik Hills, that is in Gujarat of North India. So, uh, scientists by name Edward Levis and Leakey in 1930 have excavated the uh, uh, human fossils of uh, Ramapithecus type from there. So, there they gave the name Ramapithecus and uh, Sivapithecus to this particular ancestral man. It was believed that this Ramapithecus man had lived in the South Asia and Africa regions predominantly because that was the place where the scientists have excavated um, the uh, fossils. It is also believed that around 15 million years ago, this Ramapithecus man were living in Miocene epoch. Students remember this epoch, period, era, this role, uh, the geological time scale given. Like how we have in the uh, time, uh, Indian standard time, uh, hours, then minutes, seconds, milliseconds, like this we have a uh, geological period divided into number of fractions. That way, Miocene epoch is the time during which this Ramapithecus man, the pre-human ancestor was living. The features when we look at, he had a very deeper jaw. Jaw was very deep. You can see towards the uh, down extreme left is the jaw representing the 
Ramapitika's man. The canines were small comparatively to the Dryopithecus. They have reduced canine. Broad and low crowned, flattened molars they had. Molars were broad, they were flattened and crowned. They had crowns. And this molage is externally covered with a thick layer of the enamel, indicating the stronger herbivorous nature for the um, organisms. Down is the picture representing towards the right side, the skull, half skull which the scientists could excavate. When we see their teeth, it is adapted for grinding the seeds and nets, uh, similar to most of the modern human beings. The dental arch, dental arch refers to the position where this, uh, the jaw type is to which uh, the uh, teeth have attached. So it is almost of the V-shaped, not as parabola. Parabolic or dental arch we find for the human uh, beings of the modern age, but there it had almost V-shaped or hairpin type of uh, a dental arch they had. They walked partially upright but by using all the four number of limbs. So it is quadrupedal movement, walked on the ground. So when they started walking on the ground, the life from the trees or arboreal life got descended onto the ground during this period of Ramapithecus. Now is the picture that you can see an imaginary picture of the Ramapithecus man. He also lived on the trees during the night times. So uh, on the treetops they were living, but they also used to walk on the ground. But by using all the full number of limbs like that of a monkey, you can imagine a monkey. So that's why we give monkey man or uh, Ramapithecus man. The population got declined because of the competitions. The next type of uh, human fossil is Australopithecus. Students, Astralis is the term from which Australopithecus got derived. Astralus means southern, south side. Pithecus means ape. Ape which got uh, uh, excavator from the southern parts of Africa. This is a prehistoric man. Okay, prehistoric man, not hominid group, remember. The third prehistoric man that we study, but this man had lived during early Pleistocene epoch. Students remember the time of the geological scale when you look at the early most uh, 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 early time was the Miocene, then comes Pleistocene. In the Pleistocene, we have early Pleistocene, mid Pleistocene and late Pleistocene. In the early Pleistocene, this prehistoric man got lived. This is also first ape man again, like that of Ramapithecus. Because he is a man with the brain size of an ape he had. When you look at the skull down towards the left side in the picture of the slide, you can see the top region having a round shaped structure indicating the brain case size. That is the place, cranium, in which the brain got lodged. So size of the uh, uh, brain is comparatively smaller, like that of an ape. So hence we call this man as first ape man, remember, first ape man. So Australopithecus is considered to be the first ape man. He is also the first ape man who started moving with the two hind limbs. So bipedal locomotion was exhibited by this particular ape man, even though he is not belonging to the category of hominids. 
The fossil was discovered by Darton in 1925 in the South Africa. Well, students, this Australopithecus man lived in small groups, so social uh, 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 living was seen in the forms of Australopithecus also. They had a very small brain like that of an ape who lived around 1.5 million years ago, very close um, uh, uh, time to that of Ramapithecus. So we consider them as prehistoric man. They had a very short stature. They were very short to look at, around 1.2 meters to um, meters, that is four to five feet tall. But they could walk with the help of the uh, hind limbs. So bipedal locomotion were exhibited by this particular man. 